Hello and welcome to Reptiles and Research. So in today's video we're going to talk about baby bearded dragon feeding schedules and how much you should actually feed your baby bearded dragon. Now I'll start by saying that everything I know is because I interviewed on my podcast the leading expert in bearded dragons in the world, Dr. Jonathan Howard, aka Beardy Vets, and also from keeping my own bearded dragons and also the bearded dragons that my partner has as well. So you can be assured that I'm also using my own knowledge but then riffing off of Beardy Vet as well. So your baby bearded dragon, the first thing we need to say is that baby bearded dragons grow way too fast in captivity. In our homes, people are following silly rules as if like feed as much as you can in 15 minutes. You don't want to do that. That's nonsense. It's actually causing a lot of problems for bearded dragons in our homes. And by that, I mean... Bearded dragons are growing way too fast. So in the wild, it might take an, a bearded dragon to get to adult size in two years. People are getting bearded dragons from hatchling to adult in six months or even to a year. They're growing way too fast. They're overfeeding way too much. The reason we want to grow them far slower is because... So in bearded dragons and most other vertebrates, you need twice as much calcium in your blood as you do phosphorus. And what that does is it helps them like move calcium around the body to do muscle contraction and muscle fibers and the neurons firing and bone health, many different things that calcium is needed for. The phosphorus is also important, but at the right ratio of two to one. So what happens when a bearded dragon needs more calcium than they've actually got is they draw calcium from their bone storage so they can bring it back into their blood to bump up those levels again. And as a survival mechanism, that's absolutely fine. It means they can go short periods in the wild and pump up that blood levels. But then when they next get calcium, they relay it down the bone. And it's a short temporary fix. The problem is, is when it's prolonged, they continuously draw and draw and draw. And then you get like weakened bones and bone fractures and something called metabolic bone disease, which is basically like rubbery bones and basically like their skeletal system is damaged beyond repair. And what happens if a bone goes bent out of shape? When you give them more calcium, the bone shape doesn't fix. They just relay calcium on a misshapen bone. So you really don't want them to get into this state in the first place. So the big problem is, is that when we feed our bearded dragons, the insects they eat are bugs so they don't have bones they don't have skeletons they have exoskeletons so they don't have storage for calcium and what that means is that their exoskeleton actually has a lot of phosphorus so we're giving these bearded dragons that need two to one ratio at the very minimum pure phosphorus in the form of their bugs so we need to give calcium powder on those bugs to make sure that we're giving more calcium than phosphorus now you might ask, well, who's, who's dusting their bugs in the wild? And I'll tell you why. In the wild, they're eating plants that are 20 times as much calcium to phosphorus. So as an overall rule, their diet is high in calcium compared to phosphorus, and they're leading really healthy lives in the wild. The problem is in captivity, if we don't get that levels right, problems can occur. So with baby bearded dragons and people telling people to feed loads in a short amount of time we're plowing loads of protein into them and loads of phosphorus which means not only their levels might become two to one but because they're growing so quickly they might have needs of five to one seven to one and people are following rules that are like put calcium on their bugs every second day and things like that so they're leading into a situation where they're causing rapid growth in an animal that's growing far more than it naturally would but also under supplying the calcium they need so what you want to do is let them grow very very slowly provide the calcium they need and just go for a really nice slow growth of that baby bearded dragon they're paying more money to feed more bugs to cause problems so it's cheaper to do and it's the right thing to do in my opinion and beardy vets and it grows your animal slowly and more healthier and you get to enjoy the baby phase for far longer. So in every possible scenario, it's a win-win-win. And if we're plowing loads of protein into this growing animal, they have to, one, process loads of protein very quickly. And that can be quite hard on the liver, processing all this protein and things like that. But also you can get things like gout and problems from oversupplying a lot of protein all at once. There was once where I worked in a store and someone rang back and was like, you sold me a bit of dragon with gout. So what she'd done, she'd gone online and seen like, oh, so eat as many bugs as they eat in 15 minutes twice a day or some ridiculous rule. 
And she shoveled so much protein into this animal that it actually got gout. But when it got a problem, she went to the vet and the vet diagnosed it with gout. But she didn't realize that she caused the problem and she rang us up and we're like, you saw me a bearded dragon that was born with gout. That's not possible. It can't be born with gout. You cause the gout. But that is just an example of like how oversupplying and just shoveling loads of protein into them can cause that problem. So what Beardy Vet recommended on the podcast we recorded was to feed four to five protein prey items around the distance between the size of their eyes once per day. And you want to be providing vegetation once per day as well. And then as the bearded dragon grows... Once it gets to sort of like 30 grams, you can scale that back to every second day with a gap of no food in between. And then scale that up to adulthood where you're literally scaling things back per days. Again, there is a give and take here. You need to look at your animal and be like, is it getting really skinny in its midsection? If it is, you can step it up the portion size and give more than a four to five in a, in a row. Or you can go back to once per day again. But if it's getting really fat around the midsection, you basically want to go to every third day and keep that same portion size. It's all about portion control and keeping an eye on your animal. And you really need to make sure that you're not getting an overweight, obese animal. So make sure you're supplying calcium powder on every single bug that you feed. And that way you're ensuring that you're supplying enough calcium with the bugs that you're feeding. And then take it very slowly, feed, let's say five, because Beardy Vet was just basically insinuating like a small handful of bugs and he said four to five. But I know beginners want like an absolute number. So let's go for five insects per day around the size between the gap between their eyes. Once per day, as well as providing the vegetation they want to eat once per day. Once you do that, you'll get much slower growth, much healthier growth. And even then your baby will grow quite quickly because it's a much more wild-like growth rates and a much more natural state for that baby bearded dragon to be in so i'll say it again five insects between the size of their eyes once per day when it gets to 30 grams you can scale that back to every second day if it's getting fat still you can go third day or if it's not necessarily gaining weight or it's getting a little bit thinner around the midsection you can go six bugs seven bucks and change the portion sizes to find that sweet spot so let's talk about vegetation. So many people have problems getting their baby bearded dragons to eat vegetation. And the reason behind that is because people have raised bearded dragons following these rules of like as many bugs as they'll eat in 15 minutes. So they give them all the tasty bugs and like give them everything they want. And then when they try to offer vegetation, their bearded dragon is either not really that hungry and kind of full on bugs anyway. And they're like, eh. Or they hold out on the vegetation because they know that if they did that the last time, you went and gave them bugs, which is they want. It's their tasty treat. It's like children. Do you want them to eat the, the vegetables or do you want them to have sweets? If you keep giving your kids the sweets, they're constantly going to hold out and be like, no, I don't want any vegetables. Thank you. So think of it that way. If you've inherited a baby bearded dragon that's acting in that way, it's completely fine to just not feed the bugs and completely hold out and just supply veg each time until they eat. They won't starve themselves to death. They're not stupid. They won't look at food right next to them and decide not to eat and die. That They are far more intelligent than than that. And then the vegetation, a really good way of doing things is the little crest packets with like the sprouts. Baby bearded dragons love browsing from that and that can be a nice initial start on a baby hatchling just to get like the idea of like eating veg in their, in their system and like in their habitual day to day. And then you can offer lots of different vegetables um, and lots of different like weeds. You can go weed picking. I have a great guide on how to go weed picking on this channel. So go ahead and watch that. You can basically feed your baby bearded dragon for free because they're actually short amount they need to eat is far less than the, veg the weeds that you can actually find on a daily day basis so I recommend doing that personally but you can also feed lots of like store-bought vegetation like uh, rocket, um, globe artichoke, uh, dragon snap there's, there's, there's just loads of things that you can feed you've got to have a bit of like tough love about you and be like I can see the situation that's happening here you're holding out for bugs and you've got a bad habit I'm literally going to hold off and you're not going to get the bugs until you eat your vegetables. <laughs> you're not having your sweets until you eat the vegetables. And that's basically what you have to be. Your bearded dragon's not going to die. I mean, if you've got an underweight bearded dragon that you've inherited from somewhere and it's in a bad nick, um, having those 
protein items for like growth and repair would be good for them but a little bit of common sense of like if you've got a healthy rotund bearded dragon with nice muscle mass you it can go a little bit without eating the bugs completely fine have a bit of tough love about you and it'll eat its veg what i will say is you want to rotate the bug species that you feed often if you can Many people like try to put like whole bowls of mealworms in with baby bearded dragons. Again, that goes back to the whole oversupplying of protein and the calcium levels. Don't do that. You want to manually control how much you give them. And you don't want them to have like a monotypic diet of just one bug type as well. You want to go like a grasshopper, a cockroach, a cricket, a mealworm a calcium worm you get the idea you want them to have like variety in their diet because each individual species of bug has different nutrient properties some things have different amino acid structures than other things so the best way to go about it is give them a nice varied balanced diet and then you know that those babies are getting what they need and then once every two weeks on one feeding of bugs offer a multivitamin every two weeks and the rest of it if you're feeding bugs supply them with just calcium powder and you don't need to calcium powder the veg thank you for watching if you want to see how much to feed an adult bearded dragon, then go on to the next guide in this series.